good day, good day. Uh, just chilling here in the sun, having a little uh, sun nap. My big buddy Muddy, he's very comfortable. He's just a big baby. Um, so, promised you a little uh, update on my life. <laughs> so, all the videos I used to have up where I was sitting in the truck at night, that was at my old job. I spent the last eight years working in the oil field in the Canadian North. Uh, made about a hundred grand a year up there. And uh, that's where I put on all the weight. My job wasn't very labor intensive and cafeteria food and whatever, so I packed on the weight. And then, too, it's really bad up there in the winter. Uh, in the Canadian North, in the winter, it's you don't really get daylight. You get five, six hours of kind of half light a day, so you get really depressed. It's, it's really easy to... Uh, to become a hermit and just eat and whatever. So I lost that job. I got fired. Um, basically what it came down to was uh, I was a Scott Air Technician. I worked on the breathing equipment, uh, the supplied breathing air packs like firefighters wear. And basically it came down to the company I was working with was pulling some really shady stuff and I couldn't take part in it anymore so I called and reported them and of course got fired so I lost a hundred thousand dollar a year job but I had to it was the right thing to do it needed to be done and nobody else had the balls to do it that seems to be kind of uh, a family trait in my family you know Nobody else wants to get shit done. Yeah, send in us. So, I go from a hundred thousand a year to uh, twenty thousand a year. Less than that. I'm working at Walmart now. So, well below the poverty line here in Alberta. And. And then on top of that, my girlfriend of the last two and a half years, well, she was really bad off into the street drugs. Just partying, and it just kept getting worse and worse. Um, and then towards the end of our relationship, she saw me losing weight, getting healthy again. Um, I stopped drinking. Like, she could tell that she was losing me to a different path. And that manifested itself in resentment and anger and everything else like that. So, yeah, she just... She went out and did uh, blow one night, and then she came home, and in the morning, still all sketched out and kicked me out of the house. So there I am. 36 years old. Standing, you know, used to make $100,000 a year. And then I'm just standing there in the street. Everything I own in the world is in a backpack and a suitcase. I can't tell you how liberating that was. You know, you talk about it, you think about it, you know, you realize the material possessions just, you know, they don't define you. They aren't you. But then when you actually find yourself standing there, stripped of all possessions, it's just you standing there on the planet. It's incredibly liberating. There's a freedom in that. Um, so yeah, um, that's what's been going on. And uh, after I got fired from that job and I hit that crossroads in life, that's when I consumed the ayahuasca. I brewed up some ayahuasca in my own goddamn kitchen. Guess what, it's folks? Stovetop aya is entirely possible. Don't let the haters try to, you know, or, or the, the shaman, uh, the scamming, uh, try to uh, dissuade you from that. Stovetop ayahuasca is entirely possible. It's not incredibly difficult. Um, it just takes the better part of a day. 
Um, so I did the ayahuasca, I drank that, I sat at my kitchen table for two days and, and drank ayahuasca and, and, uh, oh, very, very interesting experience. The visions are so different from anything I've ever encountered before. Um, but then, yeah, uh, after, I was 265 pounds then, and then uh, I drank the ayahuasca. I had the visions, uh, and then I just my palate completely changed. I, I I didn't I have I still haven't experienced a sensation of hunger yet, and it's been like six months. Uh, I don't crave junk anymore. Uh, I'm down 85 pounds, something like that. I'm not even counting anymore. I'm just I know I'm where I'm what I want to be. I'm, I'm thin, I'm healthy, I'm active, I'm flexible. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to get into yoga now. That's, that's fun. That's really kicking my ass. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, here I am. From one end of the spectrum to the complete opposite. From rich to poor. Talk about perspective. <laughs> but one little piece of perspective being broke and just being in poverty, you know, just such a contrast. I know, buddy. So I, uh, I, I get paid once. Uh, about a week later, I'm at the end of my money. I'm at work one night. I work pretty hard. I'm out back there in the receiving, offloading trucks. Um, I spent my, uh, on my lunch break, I spent my last four dollars I had on, uh, two junior bacons at Wendy's and as I was walking back to work there's this grassy laneway between the businesses this alleyway but it's 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 grass and lilac bushes it's really nice back there and as I'm walking back to work there's this kid curled up in the bushes and what looks to be the beginnings of some pretty major withdrawal as soon as I saw him I stopped dead in my tracks and I, I, I I get angry with him. Sorry, buddy. I, uh... Like, my mind just started to generate all this stuff. Trying to find reasons, you know, to, to, to hate this man. To just see a loser junkie. To find fault in him. To discredit him as my human brother. And this old expression I, I read about once, I think it's from Africa, it pops into my head. And the saying is, how can I be happy if my brother is sad? So I actually said that out loud while I was standing there. So I reached into the bag, I took a cheeseburger out for myself and put it in my pocket. And then I took the bag over and I set it beside him. And as I set it beside him, I said, if you had any idea how fucking broke I am right now. And I set it beside him and I walked away. So yeah, I did a good thing. Did I feel better about myself? Hell no, I was hungry. Doing the right thing doesn't always make you feel better about yourself. But, I don't know, I've just always been like that, I guess. If I have next to nothing, and I run into somebody else with nothing, half of it is, is theirs. Listen to there, buddy. Am I keeping you awake? <laughs> okay, but I gotta get on my way, get ready for work. Uh, that was a pretty sketchy, unorganized update, I know, but uh, I'm a sketchy, unorganized kind of guy. You know, I'll take care out there. Peace.